Today's lecture will describe the process of Gibson assembly. The Gibson assembly was invented by Daniel Gibson in 2009 and is widely used in a number of molecular biology labs today. Briefly, the Gibson assembly is a DNA assembly method which allows for the joining of multiple DNA fragments in a single isothermal reaction, resulting into a single double-stranded DNA molecule as seen here. Unlike any other DNA assembly method, the Gibson assembly requires only a small number of components and be carried out in one pot. Now, there are three enzymes required for this reaction, the first being a T5 exonuclease, the second being a DNA polymerase, which has fusion polymerase, and finally, a DNA ligase, such as TAC DNA ligase. If you remember from your basic biology classes, uh, an exonuclease chews back DNA from the 5' prime end. Uh, a DNA polymerase uh, incorporates nucleotides to fill in any gaps. And finally, a DNA ligase covalently joins the DNA of adjacent segments to make one complete DNA molecule. So for the Gibson assembly, these three enzymes are mixed together with adjacent DNA fragments that have at least around 20 to 40 base pair overlaps as we saw earlier uh, between each other and then incubated for an hour at 50 degrees Celsius. And during the hour these three enzymes, the T5 exonuclease, the fusion polymerase, uh, and the tag DNA ligase set to work on the DNA fragments. This diagram briefly describes the Gibson assembly reaction. Um, as you can see, there are two DNA fragments, DNA fragment A and DNA fragment B. Using PCR, we can tag along uh, complementary nucleotide sequences that are overlapped between the two DNA fragments, as you can see here and here. These two DNA fragments are then um, mixed together and incubated uh, with the three enzymes that we talked about, the T5 exonuclease, the fusion polymerase, and the TAC ligase, and it is incubated at 50 degrees C for an hour. Uh, what happens at first is that the exonuclease starts chewing each of these DNA fragments from the 5' prime to the 3' prime end, this way, uh, on the DNA fragment A, and the 5' prime end to the 3' prime end uh, on DNA fragment B. Um, the complementary sequences then anneal, creating the double-stranded DNA of interest, as you can see over here. Secondly, the DNA polymerase extends the 3' prime end, filling in the gaps this way and that way. And finally, the DNA ligase seals the remaining nix, uh, and the end result is a fully sealed double-stranded DNA that can serve as a template for any molecular biology application, as you can see over here. So now, there are several advantages of the Gibson assembly compared to conventional restriction enzyme or ligation cloning methods of recombinant DNA. Uh, first, it is simple. Uh, it requires fewer steps and fewer re reagents. It also takes lesser time. Um, secondly, there are no restriction digests of the DNA fragments after PCR. 
that is necessary. Third, we have uh, multiple DNA fragments can be combined simultaneously in a single reaction, and I think around six to ten DNA fragments have been successfully um, joined together into a single double-stranded DNA molecule using the Gibson assembly method. And finally, no restriction scars remains between the DNA fragments. So just to summarize, uh, the Gibson assembly is a quick and efficient way of joining multiple DNA fragments into a single double-stranded DNA molecule. And all of this is done in a single isothermal reaction using three enzymes, uh, the T5 exonuclease, a DNA polymerase such as fusion polymerase, and a TAC DNA ligase.